Hey everyone, Will here. So for today's video, we are going to be analyzing the Vietnam War. That means we're going to be going over all aspects of this war, including the details that led up to the war, the details during the war, and the details at the end of the war. So without further ado, let's begin. So the Vietnam War was a war fought between communist North Vietnam, which was backed by the Soviet Union and China, and South Vietnam, which was backed by the United States. The Vietnam War took place between the dates of November 1st, 1955, and April 30th, 1975. This war also acted as a key battleground in the Cold War, which was a massive geopolitical rivalry that took place between the United States and the Soviet Union throughout the mid to late 20th century. So the story behind the Vietnam War begins back in 1887. At this time, Vietnam had become a part of the French territory of Indochina. During World War II, the French had lost control over the colony of Vietnam as Japanese troops managed to briefly occupy the area. In 1941, Japanese control over the colony was challenged when Vietnamese revolutionary Ho Chi Minh formed the Viet Minh, or the League for the Independence of Vietnam, which sought to liberate Vietnam from Japanese occupation. Ho Chi Minh's revolutionary movement ended up receiving support from several Allied powers in World War II which included the U.S., the Soviet Union, and China. On September 2nd of 1945, Ho Chi Minh officially declared Vietnam's independence from both Japan and France, establishing the Democratic Republic of Vietnam, while relieving Emperor Bao Dai of his control over the region. This political move greatly displeased political leaders in France, causing the French to attempt to reassert control over the territory. On September 23rd of 1945, French military forces managed to overthrow the Democratic Republic of Vietnam, declaring that France's control over the colony was restored. This caused the Viet Minh to launch an insurgency against French rule over the territory, leading to the start of the First Indochina War in December of 1946. In the 1950s, the First Indochina War had become a key factor in the Cold War. In January of 1950, China and the Soviet Union recognized the Viet Minh's Democratic Republic of Vietnam to be the legitimate government of Vietnam. Shortly after this occurred, the United States and Great Britain chose to retaliate, since they had begun to fear communist expansion that was being directed by the Soviet Union and its allies. In February of 1950, the United States and Great Britain officially recognized the French state of Vietnam that was being led by former Emperor Bao Dai as the legitimate government of Vietnam. In July of 1950, Chinese military advisors began to assist the Viet Minh, transforming their force from a guerrilla team into a full-fledged tactical army. In September of 1950, the United States created the Military Assistance and Advisory Group to help aid, advise, and train Vietnamese soldiers who were loyal to the French cause. By 1954, the U.S. had spent $1 billion in support of the French military operations in Vietnam. During the Battle of Dien Bien Phu, U.S. carriers sailed to the Gulf of Tonkin as the U.S. carried out reconnaissance missions to aid the French. U.S. Vice President Richard Nixon suggested that the U.S. take a more active role in combating the Viet Minh forces, although President Dwight D. Eisenhower ended up dismissing the idea of sending American soldiers to aid the war effort. Shortly after this decision, the French garrison at Dien Bien Phu surrendered, causing the French to cease all military involvement in Indochina. At the Geneva Convention, independence was granted to Cambodia, Laos, and Vietnam, marking the end of the First Indochina War. It was also decided that Vietnam should be divided at the 17th parallel. South Vietnam was led by Go Dinh Diem, while North Vietnam was led by Ho Chi Minh. 
Although Ho Chi Minh desired to retake South Vietnam, his allies in China persuaded him that he could eventually take control of the region through electoral means. Citizens of Vietnam were allowed to freely move between North and South Vietnam for a 300 day period. At this time, many Northern Vietnamese Catholic citizens fled to South Vietnam in fear of being persecuted by the communist government of North Vietnam. This influx of Northern Vietnamese Catholics into South Vietnam gave Go Dinh Diem a strong anti-communist constituency to back his political ambitions. Meanwhile, over 130,000 communist revolutionaries in South Vietnam ended up fleeing north to regroup with communist allies. Between 1953 and 1956, the northern Vietnamese government enacted many policy reforms, which included redistribution of land ownership, causing a lot of political controversy in the region. As this was happening, many political opponents of these policies were executed or wrongfully imprisoned by the northern Vietnamese government. On October 23rd of 1955, Go Dinh Diem held a rigged national referendum election for reuniting North and South Vietnam, with the results falsely showing that 98.91% of the voters supported Southern Vietnamese independence. After this election, Diem established the Republic of Vietnam while naming himself president of the new country. At this time, U.S. President Dwight D. Eisenhower subscribed to the Domino Theory, a belief that argued that if one country fell to communism, then surrounding countries would also fall as well. Future U.S. President John F. Kennedy also subscribed to this belief in a speech to the American Friends of Vietnam, stating, Burma, Thailand, India, Japan, the Philippines, and obviously Laos and Cambodia are among those who would be threatened if the red tide of communism overflowed into Vietnam. Throughout the 1950s, security forces commanded by Go Dinh Diem began to use equipment provided by the US military and the CIA to root out Viet Minh sympathizers in the Republic of Vietnam, arresting thousands of suspected Vietnamese communist citizens, many of whom were executed by Diem's government. By 1957, the Viet Cong and opponents of Diem's regime began to attack southern Vietnamese government officials, eventually engaging the southern Vietnamese army in strategic combat as well. In December of 1960, the opposition to Diem's regime grew when opponents of Diem's government organized the National Liberation Front, an armed revolutionary movement that challenged the authority of Diem's government throughout South Vietnam. At this time, the Northern Vietnamese military provided military aid to the Viet Cong revolutionaries through the use of the Ho Chi Minh Trail, a logistical network of trails that ran from North Vietnam to South Vietnam through Laos and Cambodia. Several thousands of Northern Vietnamese soldiers infiltrated South Vietnam through the Ho Chi Minh Trail between the years of 1961 and 1963. By 1961, U.S. President John F. Kennedy had taken the stance that it was ultimately the responsibility of Diem and his forces to defeat Northern Vietnamese forces and rebels that were attempting to undermine his government. Kennedy correctly anticipated that although the deployment of American combat troops into Vietnam might initially have a favorable military impact, it would eventually lead to adverse political and military consequences in the long run. In the late months of 1961, the US and the South Vietnamese government launched the Strategic Hamlet Program. The goal of this program was to isolate and resettle the rural southern Vietnamese population into fortified villages, with the intended goal of minimizing the influence of the National Liberation Front in the region. In these villages, poor rural southern Vietnamese farmers would be provided with protection, economic support, and aid by the southern Vietnamese government. 
The intended outcome of this program was to make rural southern Vietnamese citizens more loyal to the Republic of Vietnam. This program ended up backfiring, actually contributing to increased support for the National Liberation Front. This caused the Strategic Hamlet program to be fully shut down by 1964. On January 2nd of 1963, the Army of the Republic of Vietnam faced an embarrassing defeat at the Battle of Atbac, when a small team of Viet Cong soldiers managed to defeat the much larger and much more well-equipped Southern Vietnamese military. In the battle, the Army of the Republic of Vietnam had a total of 83 casualties, while the Viet Cong Army only had a total of 18 casualties. The loss at this battle highlighted a deeper issue with the leadership behind the Southern Vietnamese Army. In this battle, Go Dinh Diem put his most trusted general, Huynh Van Cao, in charge of his military forces. Like much of Diem's inner circle, Cao was a Catholic who had been promoted due to his strong Catholic faith and loyalty to Diem, rather than due to his strategic or tactical prowess. This left the southern Vietnamese army at a severe disadvantage to northern forces, who had a much more unified front. In May of 1963, a lack of confidence in Go Dinh Diem's ability to successfully lead the Republic of Vietnam increased when he proved unsuccessful in stopping anti-Buddhist violence. The Hue Phat Don shootings of nine unarmed Buddhists led to massive protests over discrimination that was being directed towards Buddhist citizens of South Vietnam. In 1963, the U.S. State Department began to heavily favor encouraging a coup to get rid of Go Dinh Diem's younger brother, Go Dinh Nu, who was the leader of the secret police and special forces for the Republic of Vietnam. Nu was known for encouraging and enabling violence against Buddhist citizens, which led U.S. officials to view him as an obstacle in achieving unity throughout South Vietnam. On November 2nd of 1963, Go Dinh Diem and his brother Go Dinh Nu were both executed in an extremely violent coup that was initiated by an enraged southern Vietnamese demonstrators. After the death of Go Dinh Diem, Political instability swept across South Vietnam, leading to an increasingly emboldened North Vietnam. Shortly after the death of Go Dinh Diem, the U.S. faced its own domestic challenges after the assassination of U.S. President John F. Kennedy. This caused Vice President Lyndon B. Johnson to ascend to the presidency. President Johnson similarly ascribed to the domino theory that was followed by both of his predecessors, Eisenhower and Kennedy, viewing South Vietnam as a critical stronghold for stopping the spread of communism in Southeast Asia. On August 2nd of 1964, the USS Maddox was conducting an intelligence mission along the coast of North Vietnam in the Gulf of Tonkin. While there, the USS Maddox fired three warning shots at northern Vietnamese torpedo boats, which opened fire on the U.S. Navy vessel with torpedoes and machine guns. The incident at the Gulf of Tonkin resulted in four northern Vietnamese casualties and no American casualties. Two days later, an attack similar to the Gulf of Tonkin incident was reported, although this follow-up attack never actually occurred. U.S. President Lyndon B. Johnson used this information to order the initiation of Operation Pierce Arrow, a series of 64 deadly airstrikes against northern Vietnamese torpedo bases in Hon Gai, Luc Chau, Quang He, Phuc Loi, as well as the northern Vietnamese oil storage depot in Vinh. This incident ended with the capture of American pilot Everett Alvarez Jr., who became the first U.S. Navy prisoner of war in Vietnam. Following this, the U.S. Congress pushed through the Gulf of Tonkin Resolution, which allowed President Lyndon B. Johnson to escalate U.S. involvement in Vietnam without using a formal declaration of war. As tensions escalated, the U.S. military drafted a total of 2.2 million American men 
to serve and aid in the fight in Vietnam. This draft caused many American men to volunteer for the armed forces so they would have more of a choice in which part of the military they would serve under. Many eligible Americans sought educational or parental deferments out of fear of being drafted to serve in the war effort. Meanwhile, other Americans fled the country, with thousands of Americans fleeing to Canada. While the draft aided the U.S. war effort in Vietnam, it also helped mobilize support for the anti-war movement that was growing throughout the U.S., particularly among young people. As this was happening, the Communist Party of Vietnam General Secretary, Le Zuan, advocated for full frontal attacks into the South. In 1965, the Northern Vietnamese Army continued to successfully overwhelm the South. The Battle of Binh Gia showcased the brutal guerrilla warfare tactics that the Viet Cong utilized to great success in heated combat. Later on in 1965, the National Liberation Front attacked Camp Holloway, an important U.S. Army helicopter facility. This attack caused the destruction of 10 U.S. aircrafts, with 15 more aircrafts enduring substantial damage. In response to this attack, U.S. President Lyndon B. Johnson ordered a series of bombing campaigns to take place across North Vietnam. These bombing campaigns were named Operation Flaming Dart, Operation Rolling Thunder, and Operation Arclight. In addition to enacting bombing campaigns throughout South Vietnam, U.S. officials came to the conclusion that the Southern Vietnamese military force was not adequate enough to guard U.S. air bases, which led to the deployment of U.S. troops in Da Nang, Vietnam on March 8th of 1965. After the start of the civil war in Laos between the U.S.-backed royal government of Laos and the communist Pathé Lao government, the U.S. Air Force started an aerial bombardment of the Pathé Lao in an attempt to prevent northern Vietnamese access to the Ho Chi Minh Trail. This massive operation ultimately failed. The United States bombing campaigns frequently used napalm bombs. These bombs were made with the sticky, flammable chemical that was extremely effective at destroying jungle and causing maximum destruction to targeted populations. By the end of 1965, there were over 200,000 U.S. ground troops that were deployed throughout Vietnam. Although the U.S. had superior technological weapons to the northern Vietnamese military, they were frequently ambushed throughout the jungle giving the Northern Vietnamese Army an advantage over the newly deployed U.S. troops. This made the U.S. troop casualty count extremely high, leading to record low morale. U.S. General William Westmoreland attempted to change the tide of the war by creating a three-point plan that would put American troops on the offensive in an effort to swiftly win the Vietnam War. Westmoreland's three-point plan included deploying as many U.S. forces as necessary to overwhelm the Northern Vietnamese Army, putting the Northern Vietnamese Army on full defense, and completely overwhelming Northern Vietnamese forces until they were completely destroyed. This plan was approved, leading to the continuation of the war effort. In 1965, Nguyen Cao Ki became the Prime Minister of South Vietnam, while Nguyen Van Tu became chief of state. This brought some political stability to the southern Vietnamese government. Meanwhile, U.S. officials called upon their allies in the Southeast Asia Treaty Organization to deploy more troops to support the southern Vietnamese cause, which they agreed to do. Although the U.S. had reinforcements, the incredibly harsh conditions and terrain in Vietnam inflicted a lot of harm upon U.S. troops. The use of the Kuchi tunnels by northern Vietnamese forces led to U.S. forces facing many surprise attacks from northern Vietnamese soldiers hiding within these tunnels. This caused U.S. and southern Vietnamese troops to train soldiers known as tunnel rats to travel into the tunnels and locate enemy traps and hidden northern Vietnamese soldiers. The harsh and grueling warfare used throughout the Vietnam War 
caused many soldiers to face post-traumatic stress disorder after the war. In 1966, Northern Vietnamese President Ho Chi Minh stated, Everything depends on the Americans. If they want to make war for 20 years, then we shall make war for 20 years. If they want to make peace, we shall make peace and invite them to tea afterwards. This highlighted how the Northern Vietnamese military force were willing to engage in further combat throughout the coming decades. On January 30th of 1968, the Northern Vietnamese Army, in coordination with the National Liberation Front, launched a massive military attack on South Vietnam. This attack was organized by Northern Vietnamese General Bo Nguyen Jap. This surprise attack became known as the Tet Offensive. The Tet Offensive saw 85,000 Northern Vietnamese Allied troops attack 100 cities throughout South Vietnam, including the U.S. Embassy in Saigon. The U.S. and its allies then launched an extremely effective counterattack on the city of Hue, which was engulfed in warfare. While occupying the city, northern Vietnamese allied forces brutally executed captured American soldiers. After a month of intense fighting, the city was retaken by the U.S. and its allies. However, most of the city of Hue was completely destroyed by this point. The increasingly catastrophic consequences of the Vietnam War caused U.S. President Lyndon B. Johnson's approval ratings to quickly plummet. While most U.S. troops were simply adhering to their duties overseas, a few troops were caught engaging in severely unethical actions. On March 16th of 1968, the My Lai Massacre occurred. This was a horrific event that saw the mass murder of countless unarmed northern Vietnamese citizens. The victims of this massacre included men, women, children, and even infants. Many Vietnamese women and girls were also raped and sexually assaulted. In the aftermath of this massacre, 26 U.S. soldiers were charged with criminal offenses. This story wasn't released to the American public until November of 1969. In May of 1968, peace talks between American and Northern Vietnamese officials began to take place in Paris, France. This led to a halt on bombing throughout North Vietnam. Shortly following this, former U.S. Vice President Richard Nixon was elected President of the United States. In 1969, President Nixon began to withdraw U.S. troops from Vietnam. Despite withdrawing U.S. troops, President Nixon did initiate Operation Menu which saw further bombing campaigns throughout Cambodia. Following this, U.S. forces, Southern Vietnamese forces, and Northern Vietnamese forces were all engaged in combat in Cambodia. This escalation of war efforts in Cambodia angered many Americans, leading to even more anti-war protests throughout the United States. On May 4th of 1970, four U.S. student protesters were killed in the Kent State shootings. The release of the Pentagon Papers by the New York Times led to further anger over the Vietnam War within the United States. U.S. President Richard Nixon tried to stop the papers from being published, but the U.S. Supreme Court ruled in favor of their publication. These leaked documents completely shattered much of the remaining popularity that existed for U.S. involvement in the Vietnam War. In 1972, Northern Vietnamese forces launched the Eastern Offensive, causing the U.S. to initiate Operation Linebacker, recommencing bombing campaigns throughout North Vietnam. These bombing campaigns eventually halted the offensive push that was launched by Northern Vietnamese forces. In 1973, the Paris Peace Accords finally took place, causing U.S. President Richard Nixon to halt attacks on North Vietnam. The end of U.S. involvement in the Vietnam War also led to the end of the wartime draft as well. Although U.S. involvement in the Vietnam War had ended, the war was still not over yet. The economy of South Vietnam struggled due to rising oil prices that were occurring due to the 1973 oil crisis in the Middle East. In January of 1974, northern Vietnamese forces began to invade South Vietnam. After seeing a clear path for victory ahead, 
Northern Vietnamese forces launched the 1975 Spring Offensive Campaign, effectively ending the war. Northern Vietnamese forces then moved in to capture the Republic of Vietnam's capital city of Saigon. On April 30th of 1975, a major evacuation of U.S. soldiers and diplomats from Saigon took place, with helicopters flying evacuating passengers to safety. Many southern Vietnamese citizens were abandoned in this effort. The fall of Saigon marked the official end of the Vietnam War, with the Socialist Republic of Vietnam eventually being formed under the oversight of northern Vietnamese political leader Ton Duc Thong. Overall, the Vietnam War was a long-lasting and traumatic military conflict that deeply damaged both the U.S. and Vietnam, with chemical weapons like Agent Orange leaving many Vietnamese citizens and American soldiers with permanent body deformities. Chemical weapons such as Agent Orange also caused permanent and life-altering genetic conditions that affected future offspring of the victims of these chemical weapons as well. In addition to all of this, the Vietnam War also caused many American soldiers to face extreme and lifetime conditions of PTSD. Thank you for checking out our video! If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe for more additional content. If you have any ideas for a future video topic, please leave a comment and let me know what you would like to see me cover next. I'm really hoping to grow this channel and provide you all with more content in the future, and your support means the world to me. Thanks everyone!